Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before starting the video, please go ahead and hit the subscribe button and give this video a like up. Today on The Young and the Restless Jack learns Chelsea slept with Adam. Cameron wants Sharon to blame Daniel and Victor looks to take advantage of Lily's situation. Credit, HowardWise slash All products and services featured are independently chosen by editors. However, Soaps.com may receive a commission on orders placed through its retail links, and the retailer may receive certain auditable data for accounting purposes. At the club, Victor notices Nikki's not eating. She's too worried about Faith. Victor reminds her neither Faith nor Lucy were seriously injured. Nikki just wants to see her and clucks about another car accident involving underage drinking. Victor asks if she's thinking about Faith's previous accident. Their lucky Adam was there to give her a kidney. Nikki is grateful he did that. She can't help but think about Cassie. Victor muses they lost that girl too soon. Nikki's sure this is just a painful reminder of what Sharon and Nick have already been through. Victor asks if alcohol being a factor is upsetting her. Nikki says, of course. So many young people think drugs or alcohol can solve their problems, but they can't. Victor's grateful that she's committed to her recovery. How worried should we be about Sharon's well-being? Nikki says Nick thinks she's grieving Cassie all over again after renaming Cameron's company. Wouldn't it be ironic if that noble gesture ended up causing her even more pain? In the hospital, Faith tells her parents she keeps replaying the accident in her mind. If she hadn't turned her head, Nick reminds her she was trying to help Lucy, who was sick. Sharon snaps from drinking. Nick asks if Faith is tender. Faith says she feels oak physically. She just feels terrible that she let this happen. Sharon seeds. You need to stop that. Because none of this is your fault. Faith. Nick and Faith both shoot her a wary look. Faith knows Sharon is blaming herself for the accident, but tells her she can't protect her from bad things happening. Sharon tells her they trust her, and she was trying to do the right thing. Nick said she and Lucy are oak, and that's what matters. Sharon changes the subject to food. Faith doesn't have much of an appetite, but she'd like to go home. Nick isn't sure she'll be released today and will send Maria over with her tablet. Faith guesses her mother's trip to Sedona is off now. She's glad she's there. Nick makes a joke about being chopped liver. Faith wants to see how Lucy's doing, but Sharon snaps. You don't need to worry about Lucy. Just then, Daniel comes in and says the doctors are running a few more tests on his daughter. Sharon glares at Daniel as Faith asks. Is something wrong? Is Lucy going to be oak? Daniel thinks the doctors are just being overly cautious. He's sure she'll be fine. Sharon snips. What brings you by, Daniel? Daniel just wanted to say he's sorry. Cameron appears and says he has a lot to apologize for. Sharon squeezes her eyes to try and get him to go away. He smirks at this. Daniel tells them that Lucy's drinking led to this. Faith says she may have caused that. I told Lucy we couldn't be friends. Daniel knows his daughter has had a tough time with boundaries. Faith thinks she got drunk because she rejected her. And then she called her because she had no one else. Daniel says Lucy should have called him. Cameron snarks. Maybe if she wanted a drinking buddy. Nick tells Faith that Daniel's right. But Faith argues that Lucy's a kid. She's the one who took her eyes off the road. Sharon hollers that she won't sit there and listen to Faith take the blame for any of this. Nick reminds his ex that they're not blaming anyone right now. Cameron, over Sharon's shoulder, whispers. That's not true, is it? Sharon looks at Daniel. At society, Devin wraps up a phone call as Lily walks in. He asks her what's wrong. She says her plan to oust Billy from Chancellor blew up in her face. Devin learns that he fired her. Lily explains he can terminate her contract, he just has to pay her off. Devin suggests she call Jill. Lily won't bother her. She stepped away to focus on her health. She frets that she overplayed her hand and pushed him too hard, too soon. Billy's sitting at Crimson Lights when Jack walks in and greets him. You look like hell. Billy snarks that he always knows what to say to make him feel better. He claims he just had a long night working. Jack wishes him every success at Avid Chancellor. Billy snaps at him and then apologizes. It's not about you. Just them Chelsea walks in with Connor. Jack notices Billy's reaction. Billy stands and tells Connor it's good to see him. Connor has missed him and wants to hang out. Billy says he's missed him too. They discuss a book Billy gave Connor. 
which made him feel he wasn't alone with his OCD. Billy assures him they'll make plans and hang out with Johnny. We'll make that happen. They all make Connor feel good about getting help. Chelsea asks her son to go wait in the car. Connor asks Billy if he'll see him soon. Billy answers in the affirmative and Connor hugs him. Once the boy is gone, Chelsea thanks them both. Jack steps away and Chelsea thanks Billy for covering in front of Connor. Billy would never do anything to cause him more stress. He admits he was up all night trying to figure out what comes next. Chelsea asks if he's made any decisions. In the hospital, Cameron tells Sharon she's doing a great job of hiding her rage. But she needs to get Daniel out of there before she blows. Sharon tells Daniel they need to let Faith rest. She hopes he and Heather get Lucy the help she needs. Daniel says they will and lets Faith know none of this is her fault. Faith just hopes Lucy feels better. Once he's gone, Sharon tells Faith she needs to stop apologizing. She made it clear that Lucy was not her friend or her problem. Taken aback, Faith and Nick exchange a glance. Nick tells Sharon they need to put this behind them and move on. Cameron says, Sorry, partner. That's not going to happen. At the club, Mickey asks Victor what his next move is where Chancellor is concerned. He says things are moving faster than he thought. He'd like to find out the reason for Lily and Billy's argument and asks Nikki to try and find out. Nikki has great respect for Lily, but won't let that stand in the way of what needs to be done for Catherine. They reflect that it's been 11 years since they lost her, and they miss her terribly. Nikki wants to do her part, but worries it won't happen as soon as Victor wants it to. He tells her the more information they have, the easier it will be to get rid of them. At Crimson Lights, Billy tells Chelsea he hasn't decided whether he can forgive her or not. She will do anything to fight for their relationship. I love you. Billy knows he loves her too, but he doesn't know what that means anymore. Chelsea says she has hope since he's still speaking to her. Maybe they can find their way through this. She walks out. At Society, Lily blames herself for pushing Billy, who is trying to be there for Chelsea while she supports Connor. It's all weighing him down. Devin predicts he'll now run the company into the ground. Lily didn't want this for Catherine's company. Devin worries he should have done more to keep this from happening. He tells Lily he's there for her and has her back. She knows he tried to warn her. Devin shrugs that she rolled the dice and lost, but she's not a quitter. Lily doesn't know what her next move is. Devin wonders why Lily wouldn't just come to work at Winters with him. Lily says he's no better at sharing power than Billy is. She can't just walk away. Devin doesn't think she'll be able to reform Billy and destroy him at the same time. Lily says she'll have to exploit his weaknesses. Devin encourages her to take some time to be angry and then approach it with fresh eyes. He guarantees she'll come out on top. At Crimson Lights, Jack approaches Billy to try and help. Billy rebuffs him, but then concedes he needs to talk. I gotta get these thoughts out of my head and try and make sense of it all. In the hospital, Nick says it was nice of Daniel to stop by. Cameron rages, are you kidding me? What is wrong with this guy? Daniel basically killed Cassie. And now he's let his little brat of a daughter leech onto Faith. They both almost landed in the morgue. Nick suggests to Sharon that they step out. Sharon, in a daze, tells Faith they'll be right outside. Nick teases Faith that he'll be back with a whole new batch of dad jokes. Faith tells Sharon she's sorry she scared her. Sharon says she's oak, okay, and that's all that matters. Once alone, Nick asks Sharon if she's oak. Okay. He notes this is too close to what happened with Cassie, and seeing Faith in that bed is awful. Cameron appears and grabs Sharon. Hey, I need you to focus. Every second we're getting closer to the answers we're looking for. Sharon bellows. You need to stop. Nick looks alarmed. Nick tells Sharon he's sorry. Sharon says she didn't mean to snap at him. She thinks Faith is right. She's feeling a little bit guilty about encouraging Faith to go check on Lucy. Nick tells her she shouldn't feel bad about encouraging their daughter to be a good person. Cameron tells Sharon that Nick's lying. None of this is oak. He needles that she should get Nick to give her one of those sexy steamy kisses. Sharon loudly announces she needs to go home and take a rest. She urges Nick to do the same thing. Nick will go to Crimson Lights to get coffee and pastries. He thanks Sharon for looking out for him and assures her they'll bring their little girl home soon. He warns that the best thing she can do for Faith is not let this take her to a dark place. Cameron grins. In the park, Billy tells Jack that Chelsea slept with someone else. Jack wasn't expecting that. It certainly explains the tension between them. He also saw them taking care with each other. Billy confirms they care about each other 
She made a mistake, a huge one. Jack asks if he can get past it. Billy doesn't know. He only found out for sure last night. Jack thinks he needs time to process Chelsea betraying his trust. Billy says it was one night and she's been through hell. She said she deeply regretted it. Jack thinks it seems he's offered her a lot of grace and understanding and a part of him wants to continue to do that. Billy says there's another detail that makes the conversation about forgiveness impossible. It was Adam Newman. Jack cringes. At the club, Victor spots Lily arriving and tells Nikki, here's your chance. He calls out to Lily to join them. Lily approaches the table and Victor announces he has a phone call to make. He dodges away and Nikki starts talking to Lily about Catherine. She's been going through old cards and letters from her and would like to share one with Lily since she's carrying on her legacy. She suggests they get together later for tea. Lily would really like that. In the park, Jack notes that Billy and Adam have had a long and combative history. He asks if he still loves Chelsea. Billy does, and she still loves him. Jack says that has to be what this is about, not Adam. He thinks things like this sometimes bring people closer together. He has a choice. Whether or not he wants to be there for the woman he loves. In the hospital, Sharon thanks Nick for being so calm and a rock for her and Faith. She just hopes it's the last time their daughter has anything to do with that girl. Nick is honestly more worried about Sharon than he is about Faith. Sharon assures him she's fine now. He leaves and Cameron tells Sharon, this is time to focus on what's real. She says, you're not real. Cameron will tell her what is, all the pain, loss and rage. She tries to keep buried. Sharon walks back in to look at Faith. Cameron tells her that she almost lost Faith tonight the same way she lost Cassie. And Lucy did that. Yeah, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree, does it? For everything you've lost, we both know who's to blame. Sharon looks at Faith sleeping and sees Cassie. Next on The Young and the Restless, Nick confides in Phyllis about Sharon, Daniel and Heather, give Lucy some tough love, and Claire confronts Summer.